Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. So about a year ago, I got a Synology NAS device. I just never got a chance to set it up, but this time I've decided I'm going to set it up for a Plex media server. I'm going to install Docker on this Synology device and then install Plex. If I don't like Plex running on that device, I can always move all my files and put it in a traditional, maybe Windows or Linux machine. Today I have a Synology device. This is a DS920. And this device, uh, from all the reviews that I've seen, is awesome. So I'm going to show you the process that I'm going to go through to set it up. But this Synology diagram device comes with four bays here. And I'll show you the specs once we sign in. But for now, this is what we have. I ordered a bunch of disks off eBay. But for now, I have one disk in here. This will be re removed and I'll replace it with five 1.2 terabyte drives, but for now I have um, I think this is an 800 gig drive So that should do it for for the moment in addition to this that one single drive. I have two 400 gig NVMe Drives these are also going in there and they are supposed to be way faster So today during my setup while I wait for my eBay shipment This is what I will be using the NVMe devices go in the back here, so I'll be trying to find a way to put them here. And once I get them in here, I need to plug in the device using these two ports. And then um, put in power and put it in my server rack in the back right there. So let's do that right now. Okay, so to put the NVMe, if you open this, this slot here right in there, we need to make sure that we put this side first. Just like that, slides in, and boom. Now we have um, our NVMe drive, 400 gigabit card in, which is supposed to be way, way better. All right. Now that we have our Synology device with the hard drive and the NVMe, let's go ahead and plug it in. I'll plug it in and put it in my server rig here. Then once it's plugged in, both to power and ethernet, we should be able to access it via the browser and then set it up and I'll show you the initial configuration. Okay, so coming back to the computer, after a couple of minutes, you can just go to find, finds.synology.com. It will search for your device on the network. And in this case, it just found my DS920. So it's not installed yet, but I got an IP address of 192.168.38.232. I need to go and change that IP address as soon as I get here. So I say agree, continue. Okay, no hard disk found on this device. So it did not find my hard disk. I need to go and make sure that I reset my, my drive and make sure that it, it, it works. All right, so after resetting my disk, as you can see, and now I have set up. I can find device info here, which in this case is not connected yet. So set up, install disk station manager. That's the operating system. Yes, I understand. Okay. So it says it might take up to 10 minutes. So I'll just save you some time here and we'll come back and check on it. All right. After that, just hit start. It took like three minutes for me. Device name. I'm naming it that. The account. There we go. And the password. Note that this is for my lab environment. So we set up a username and password. Hit enter. So it's saying uh, select what you want to do. There are these packages updates available, recommended. Okay. Let's install every important package here. I don't need a Synology account, so I'm going to say skip. Skip anyway. Then submit. And look what we have here. We have what looks like an operating system already. Uh, right now it's saying create a storage pool and volume. Let's do that. I hope I can see my devices. It's saying the system is healthy. Start, RAID type. This is the Synology SHR um, 
proprietary one, since I intend on putting new disks in, the, in a few days here to add to the, that, it allows the device to dynamically um, set the RAID for me, which I like. So let me name this one maybe Plex. Because that's what I'm trying on playing with. Here I only have one drive. I had to use a 250 gig drive for now. Just choose that. And I'll show you the upgrade when I, once I put new drives here next week. So connect. Perform a drive check. Uh, let's skip the drive check. I think it's good. Here's my Plex volume. Why not 229? Okay, so I'll leave it to beta RF and apply. Yes, erase the data. So I just took most of the defaults, just let the Synology handle my RAID for now. In the future, what you mo most likely want to do is maybe um, create your own RAID using the custom RAID, and then you can have more control. But for now, this is good. All right. Here's the performance information. So let me move myself out of the way here. So as you can see, here's the performance and information. So remember I had these two, the cache devices. They are not initialized right now. Action or manage available drive. A drive for storage expansion. Change RAID type. Create storage pool. Create SSG cache. Um, for now, let's do storage pool. There are two devices that do not meet the drive requirements, cannot be selected. Okay. SSD cache it is then. So SSD cache improves performance uh, of random access by storing frequent access data. Please note that SSD cache will not improve performance in scenario involving sequential. Okay. I understand. Continue. Next. I want both of them. Let's pin and next. Apply. Okay. There we go. So that's uh, the initial part of the setup. Then now they should be initialized and added. So they are erasing it's at 8%. Let's give it a moment. All right. So what's going to happen is this is going to be my device cache of 372 gigs. So they are redundant. And then, of course, uh, I have a, my volume that I created here, and it's healthy. So in a few days, we'll update this, but for now, this is what we had. Let's do a quick tour of what we have here in the operating system. So we have this package center. That's where I, I'm more interested in. So I can say I have read the terms. I need to scroll through and say, okay. I can find packages here. The easiest way would be to just say Plex, search for Plex Media Server, and just install. But there is another way I can do it where I can run a Docker container on this device and be able to actually see um, my container, be able to get inside of the container, and also I can move the data around. So I prefer that compared to this better package here. And in the next video, I'll be showing you that. In the control panel, you can see external access if you need to set that one up, um, hardware and power, you can join the device, anything that you need from here. You can even create your own file sharing, share folder, you know, uh, with specific groups and do Active Directory. If I go to Info Center, this will give me more information about my device. In this case, this is the version that we have. I don't have an account yet. Here's a serial number. Uh, fan speed is in quiet mode, which is not um, that interesting. Device analytics uh, service, if we have any. File sharing is here. The package is here. Then if we click on here, we can do a resource monitor, which is going to be interesting for me. Uh, then log center, uh, security advisor, support, sign manager if i'm using this for a sign but right now let's go to resource monitor i will be monitoring this and sending these logs maybe to an external device like a zabbix or grafana dashboard but so far things are looking good
reserved used is what's in the buffer for total memory i have four gigs as you can see that was just the initial setup of our nas in the next videos i will show you how i'm going to be setting up the plex server and then we'll show you the plex server working and do some performance testing as well if we really like this we might end up keeping it as a plex server but for now this is an experimental thing in my lab and i just want to show you how the setup looks thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next video in this series